In this month of November, we will consider the corporal work of mercy, namely, bearing the dead. Let's begin with a reading from St. Paul, his letter to the Colossians. Great Apostle writes, quote, Brethren, put ye on therefore as the elect of God, holding beloved the bowels of mercy, unquote. In a New York City art gallery on Fifth Avenue, you will find an oil painting by an Italian artist of the 17th century. The painting, which is simply entitled Tobit Burying the Dead, shows a famous biblical scene from the Old Testament where Tobit performs a corporal work of mercy, namely, burying the dead. A work of mercy and kindness shown towards the body of the deceased. This holy book takes its name from that saintly man, Tobit, whose wonderful virtues are clearly demonstrated throughout the text. Tobit was a holy Israelite from the tribe of Naphtali, who was forced into exile by the evil Assyrian Empire. Tobit showed great piety, extraordinary patience amidst tremendous suffering, and demonstrated perfect acceptance of the will of God. For those of you who know the story of Tobit and his son Tobias, you remember the archangel Raphael plays a major role in this inerrant book of the Holy Bible. It is interesting that St. Raphael hears the humble prayer of Tobit and begins to intercede for him before the throne of God, largely because of Tobit's willingness to practice a corporal work of mercy of burying the dead. The inerrant scriptures record the following, quote, It was I, Raphael, who offered your prayerful supplications before the Lord and who read them so too when you were burying the dead. The text continues, When you did not hesitate to get up and leave the table to go and bury a dead man, I was sent to test your faith, unquote. It should be noted as well that Tobit literally took his life into his hands by burying the dead. The Assyrian leader, namely Sennacherib, hated the Jews due to his inability to destroy Jerusalem. When the defeated and humiliated Sennacherib returned home, he ordered the slaying of multiple Jews in the capital of Nineveh. Furthermore, Sennacherib declared that none of those Jewish corpses should be buried. Yet Tobit, often under the cover of night, buried the dead, not only out of mercy and charity towards the body of the deceased, but also because of his belief in a future bodily resurrection. Now, during this month of November, we remember the dead, those who have gone before us, our dearest Lord teaches us to be merciful towards the bodies of the living and the deceased. We are to give relief to those with bodily needs. We are to feed the hungry, give drink to the thirsty, visit the sick and imprisoned, to clothe the naked, shelter the homeless, and yes, we are to bury the bodies of the dead properly. The book of Ecclesiasticus reads the following quote, Give graciously to all the living and withhold not kindness from the dead, unquote. An important catechism of the Holy Mother Church teaches, quote, the bodies of the dead must, note the adverb, must be treated with respect and charity in faith and hope of the resurrection. The burial of the dead is a corporal work of mercy. It honors the children of God who are temples of the Holy Ghost, unquote. The fact that we see this to be a corporal work of mercy flies in the face of the culture around us, right? Our modern society seems schizophrenic when it comes to the body. On the one hand, we are fitness conscious, and we spend much energy and money on being in shape and looking young and healthy. But then, at death, the body becomes at best inconvenience and at worst, an embarrassment, something to be discreetly gotten rid of, gotten out of the way. The modern-style funeral, if there is one, 
become simply an occasion to remember the deceased when he was alive. The wake and the funeral become not a reflection on death, judgment, and praying for the dead and hoping in the future resurrection of the body, but simply a celebration of the memories, the highlights of the deceased person's life on earth. In an age where abortion is done regularly, in an age where the terminally ill are legally euthanized in some states, in an age where the body becomes a recreational vehicle to abuse and use for the purpose of pleasure and sensual delights, it is not surprising that the bodies of the dead are disrespected. Those who commit crimes against the living bodies will commit crimes or show disrespect toward the bodies of the dead. In times past, it was rare that cemeteries were vandalized. But in this modern age, monuments being overturned or even broken is far more common. Furthermore, graveyards have been the scenes of various drunken feasts. In addition, sacred relics, sacred relics, the very remains of the saints are being sold on eBay as we speak. Or else those relics are thrown into attics to collect dust or even disposed of in the garbage. And then there is the very untraditional and unchristian practice of cremation, where the corpse is violently destroyed with fire as the pagans did in ancient times and still do in pagan Hindu countries like India. Granted, at Holy Church during the recent pontificate of Pope Paul VI, another change, allowed and tolerated such a practice under certain conditions. It was only approved of in the past for bodies infected by plague or horribly malformed or largely corrupted due to some horrible accident. That's how it was before the time of Paul VI. Very limited allowance for cremation. But in this modern age, the cremains or the ashes of the deceased are oftentimes disrespected and even sacrilegiously treated. Since the body of the deceased was literally made according to the image of Christ, the Word made flesh, and since the corpse of a baptized person was literally the temple of the Most Blessed Trinity, mistreating the remains or cremains of a man would be far worse than defacing statues in churches or toppling altars. Cremation now has become the cheap, utilitarian way to deal with the body of the deceased. In some cases, it has become a fad, with ashes being thrown into San Francisco Bay or shot up with the ashes, or rather, or shot up into space, <laughs> or human cremains replacing the sand in, a, in an hourglass, or remains, cremains, mixed with gunpowder and blown up in a fireworks display. Or the cremains of our own relatives put in special jewelry or figurines, or forgive me, mixed with ink and used to form a permanent tattoo of a relative of the deceased on one's body. Or just kept in some fireplace mantle instead of put in consecrated ground. Now in the past, in the past, the church called the practice of indiscriminate cremation both, quote, detestable and abominable, and heavy penalties were imposed on those who were cremated and those who carried through this request, forbidding them Christian burial and the sacraments. Serious penalties. These strong laws against this unchristian practice were due to the fact that the promoters and executors of cremation had strong anti-Christian motives, namely the denying of the physical resurrection of the body. Now again, it is true, I mentioned this earlier, that the Holy Office under Pope Paul VI, who changed the Mass of Rome, <laughs> The Holy Office under Pope Paul VI made a decision to relax somewhat the prescriptions of canon law touching on cremation. And so in the 1960s, more change, 
Cremation was permitted, as long as it was not chosen for anti-Christian motives. However, it remained officially discouraged. Even if no longer forbidden, it's still discouraged. But the door has been opened, and the smoke of Satan would further enter into our midst, right? Things today have totally collapsed. Fast forward 50 plus years, and cremation has become just another normal option for Catholics. The Novus Ordo liturgical books for funerals contain regulations on how to celebrate the funeral ritual before and after cremation. The local churches in some countries, including our own, have become have obtained, quote, indults or permissions that allow the remains of the deceased to be cremated before the actual offering of the funeral mass. The vessel containing the ashes of the deceased would then be included in the entrance procession of the mass. In numerous places, Catholic cemeteries and Catholic chapels in cemeteries have whole sections dedicated for urns, making cremation, not burial, the method de facto favored by the church in the eyes of many of the faithful. A couple years ago, a few years ago, the Sacred Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith under Cardinal Mueller issued a document that once again discouraged cremation. It's still discouraged. The document states, again from Cardinal Mueller, Quote, the church insistently recommends that the bodies of the deceased be buried in cemeteries or other sacred places. The document continues, burial is above all the most fitting way to express faith and hope in the resurrection of the body. The church continues to prefer the practice of burying the bodies of the deceased because this shows a greater esteem towards the deceased, unquote. Well put. But as with most modern church documents in the post-Vatican II era, there's always exceptions, right? Always just that way out. Always an option. Although it's generally not permitted, the reservation of ashes in homes can now be allowed with special permission. But as we well know, Extraordinary things, like extraordinary ministers of Holy Communion, soon become ordinary, everyday things. A future of uninterred remains on fireplace mantles, therefore, is the future for Catholics in many places, where the remains of loved ones never seem to be at rest, but are always moved around from room to room, from house to house, and when asked in an interview about the detestable practice of putting ashes in jewelry or little figurines, the one-time head of the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, again, Cardinal Mueller, stated that such a practice was truly ridiculous, but not a moral sin, nor even absolutely forbidden. Again, it's always a way out. Finally, the main reason why true Christians choose traditional burial over cremation is to unite with the mystery of Christ's burial in the tomb. We are supposed to unite with Christ's life, death, and burial so that we may unite with his glorious resurrection and ascension. Our Lord's sacred body was not burned, but it was buried. Buried like a seed, sown into the ground that produced a risen body. While burial for us allows a natural decay process, cremation violently burns the body to ashes. Think of it, the incorruptibles, the bodies of St. Bernadette, St. Catherine Labore, Blessed Imelda Lambertini, would not be on display if they had been cremated. In fact, none of the holy remains, the relics of the saints, would or could be properly venerated if their bodies had been violently burned. 
the beginnings of life and the end of life are the two most important moments during our short time on earth. Respecting bodies in the womb and in the tomb of burial is truly the Catholic practice. God bless you.